know what I did today? I listened to One Direction. Know what else happened? I got caught. Hi, I'm Nicola, and how did I get busted for listening to a boy band? Well, that's the story at the heart of part four of this series on cloud music. Quick update. The three music services I previewed last summer before disappearing are now in the market. Amazon, Google, and Apple all have their cloud solutions online. And while these services cover media, games, and other applications, for now, I really want to focus in on music. If you look at these services, they're all variations on the same strategy. Put two big functions in the cloud, a store for buying music, and then storage for keeping your music safe and accessible anywhere. And then give people a range of devices for listening. Now, all three of these services are clearly products of the second decade of the 21st century. There's no way they could have happened before now. But at the same time, they're also all based on a concept rooted in the 19th century, the notion of recordings as something I own. Even though our 21st century version of that uses bits and not molecules, even though it's stored somewhere out on the internet, not on our shelves, even though the listening device fits in our pocket, not in a cabinet, it's still rooted in a premise we got from Thomas Edison. Remember, he not only invented the phonograph, but he also invented the record company. And he set generations of us on the road of building music collections. This is my stuff. I paid for it. I have it forever. Or since Napster, this is my stuff. I acquired it somehow, but I have it forever. Thing is, ownership is only one possible model for a music business. Here's a little history. Rewind to 2001, three months after Apple introduced iPod. A company called Listen.com launched Rhapsody, a product based on a very different model. Subscription. You send them money every month and they'll give you access to all the music you want. Now, if you've heard of Rhapsody, you probably know it only has had limited success. It's been around for more than a decade. They only have about half as many subscribers as Charlie McDonald. In fact, there are now over 120 YouTubers who have more subscribers than Rhapsody. So far more people want to own music than rent it. But maybe, just maybe, it's not the concept of subscription that stopped Rhapsody. Maybe it's the implementation. What if you let people sample it generously for free for months? What if you could get really smart and innovative about the technical architecture so it's blazingly fast, responsive, so streams start almost instantly and they play without buffering delays? In other words, make the streaming from a cloud nearly as good as playing from your hard drive. And what if you made the free version pretty darn good, but made the premium version outstanding? And what if you could attract other services to integrate with your platform? Well, if you could do all that, you'd be Spotify. And Spotify, which started four years ago in Sweden, proved very popular first in Europe, now in the US. But don't stop there. What if you found a way to put your service in front of 900 million people? Now, where on the internet could I find a service with 900 million people? Well, it might help if you had Sean Parker, the guy who founded Napster, who was also a founding president of Facebook, who was played by Justin Timberlake in The Social Network. If you had that guy on your board of directors, which it turns out Spotify does. Last September at the Facebook F8 conference, Parker announced a partnership between Facebook and Spotify. And Facebook also brought in a bunch of other streaming services, including Rhapsody and Mog and RDOs, SoundCloud, Earbits, Vivo, Slacker Radio, and Songza. Now, if you have spent any time on Facebook, and 900 million people do, you can now see what your friends are listening to on these services. So this isn't just taking the old Edison model of buying music and parking it in the cloud. This is using a 21st century social media model to potentially upend the way we discover, access, and share music. And that's how I got busted for listening to One Direction. Thank you, Bri Bri, for noticing. And yes, Joshua, it was, as I told you on Facebook, research for this video. Oh, no, not you too, Lamar. Boy, everyone's busted today. So what do you think? Are you using Spotify or any other streaming service through Facebook? And do you think Facebook plus Spotify or other service add up to a threat to iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play? Until next time, I'm Mikola. Oh, you know what tech giant I didn't mention at all today? Microsoft. But they have big news coming next week at E3, and we'll cover it next Friday.